Hi there, USBGF members and friends. Uh, this is Phil Simborg, USBGF Teaching Pro. I'm posting this video directly on the USBGF Facebook site for anyone who visits the site to see. And I just want to give you all a taste of what you can see uh, many more of if you're a member of the USBGF, as many of them that are posted are simply a link, a teaser, and a link to the USBGF site. And if you're a member, you'll see the answer. Uh, we are doing this to encourage membership and to reward our members of the USBGF by providing these video lessons. And uh, if you're not a member of the USBGF, whether you are a U.S. citizen or not, we have many members who aren't, we would encourage you to join, not just so that you can see Phil Simborg's lessons and videos. There's about 40 other major reasons to join. Most of them are benefits to you. Many of them are benefits to Backgammon overall, so please give it some thought. Go to the website, take a look at the benefits of joining. Please support the organization, even if you don't like my lessons. There's a lot of other good things going on. And we've got a lot of other very good people and, and uh, top players and teachers who are there to help you and to work with you to improve your game and to help promote the game of Backgammon. Now let's get into this position. Red has a 3-1 to play on the bear off. How do you play it? Score is 11 away, 11 away. And blue holds a 2-cube. And red has a 3-1 to play. Okay, you can clear the 6-point. Or you can make a more aggressive play of taking one off and hitting. And taking one off and hitting is right by a lot. But here's the interesting thing. You not only win more gammons that way by putting the second checker on the bar, you actually win a little bit more in terms of games. Gammons, you win an extra about 5.5% more gammons, but you actually win another 1% games. And that fools people a lot. Well, think about what happens, what we call is the most common variation, what's most likely to happen. Most of the time, he's not going to roll a 1. He's not going to hit you at all. And with two checkers on the bar and a closed board or, or an almost closed board, you're going to get a heck of a lot of gammons. And that's significant here. And at all score, in most scores, it's very significant. But the other thing is, let's look at the other play. I'm going to click on the other play and hit final so you can see what it would look like. Oh, that's, that's by the way, that's the second best play. As ugly as this looks, it's still, because his board is so bad and has a blot, that would be the second best play. What most people think of doing is this play. And the problem with this play is just think about going forward. You're still likely to leave lots of shots from this position just on the next roll alone. I won't count them all for you, but double six, double five, double four, six five, six four. I mean, there's a heck of a lot of numbers that are going to leave shots here. Five four, five three, six. Um, no, I think we've covered most of them, but it, it, it's ugly. Um, anyway, so you're going to be ugly. Why not be pretty instead of ugly and win a lot more gammons? Now, let me show you something else very interesting about this position. Um, one of the major reasons it was so easy for me to find this play, and by the way, I have many students that don't find this play, and it's not that they're bad players. They just haven't had the experience to, to see... Uh, or, or to picture going forward what's likely to happen here. But let's change the board. Let's give your opponent a closed board. Now what would you do? It's still right to make the same play. Again, think about MCV, most common variation. He's going to come in and hit you if, the worst case scenario, he comes in and hits you. And you dance until he rolls the next one, and it better be a 1-6 or he's crashing. And even if he rolls a 1-6, well, if he rolls 1-6, you're in pretty big trouble. But, but he better roll a 1-6. There are 11 ones, and there's only two of those 11 ones are 1-6s. There's 1-6 and 6-1. So 9 out of 11 times, when he does roll that 1, He's crashing his board. Well, let's do one more change, just for the interest of this position. Let's put the checker here. Let's go back to the original position. We're there. How do you play 3-1 now? 
I guess it wouldn't shock you because of the quiz factor that it's still right to hit. Unbelievable. Even though he can come in with a 1-2, a 1-3, or a 1-4 and not crash, it's still right to hit. Because even if he does come in with those numbers, then the next roll better be a 6. So you've still got a lot more equity this way. Now in this case, you truly are giving up some wins with this play because of that potential. You're going to give up 5% wins, but you're gaining 11% gamuts. So if a gamut value here is about 0.5, it's actually worth about 0.52, you're still getting enough, you're still getting enough between the two plays to where it's right to, uh, it's right to make that play uh, of the hitting play. Okay. I'm sure you're thinking about it. If you're thinking at all, you're going to wonder what happens when you put the checker here. And that's where you hit the plateau. That's where you've reached the, the tipping point. And even here, it's close. 0 0.012 is the difference. So what's the, the uh, answer here? The answer here is that you have to consider the risks and rewards and try to weigh them on the next play. How can you do that intelligently? You do that intelligently with deliberate practice by taking positions like this, studying them, looking at them, looking at the numbers. Thank goodness we have these numbers to look at. 25, 30 years ago, we were just guessing at these numbers or we were playing the game out a hundred times by hand to see which one worked more. We really had no good method. Now we we not, we, once we know what the right answer is, we can back into the logic. It makes life a lot easier, and that's one reason you're seeing so many more really fine players. We probably have 500 times as many players playing at, at, a, at a championship level today uh, than you had uh, 20 years ago, thanks to uh, Extreme Gammon and Snowy and, and Gnu. Uh, now, Extreme Gammon is far and away the the uh, preferred uh, bot of all good players and if you don't have it and you really want to improve your game go to www.extremegammon.com and uh, they will ask you where you heard about it one of the drop downs is Phil Simborg if you name me I get rich I make five bucks but I'll also give you a free tutorial on how to use Extreme Gammon uh, so you email me and tell me you just got it and I'll set up a WebEx with you and I'll walk you through it and show you how to play it. And uh, we, the USBGF endorses Extreme Gammon and Extreme Gammon also is uh, endorsed by the USBGF. We work together, uh, two of the best quality uh, groups in the world, USBGF and Extreme Gammon. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and uh, hope to see you back for more. Uh, again, about uh, one out of eight or 10 of my lessons will be available to the public. The rest are available only to USBGF members. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.